Hello. Okay, everyone. Uh, I think we'd like to get started. Um, so, so let me try it. Okay, um, thank you everyone for attending. Um, I hope you all had a safe journey here and uh, it was all comfortable. Um, before we get started and we get into all the introductions and the whole thing, I'm just going to hand it over to a little introduction. Hello, everybody. I'm uh, happy to uh, again ask to say a few words and then from your own. So I'm uh, your bro. I'm uh, uh, the one who started the show uh, from three decades ago. Uh, we started uh, the DHIS and the in South Africa in the 90s. And uh, it's a great pleasure to see that uh, three decades later and two decades after we took the thing we had started in South Africa, we went to India in 2000. And uh, there we started the, the movement in Asia. And I uh, remember John Lewis there, he was uh, a bit younger then. And uh, we, we met at the Dada. And I uh, had a laptop, and we had a DHIS on the laptop, and that was DHIS 1, not 2. We hadn't uh, invented the internet yet. And then uh, we opened the laptop and told uh, John to start work on the HS and see what would happen with that. And uh, yeah, 22 years later, we are here. And uh, that's quite interesting because we worked a lot in India. And then quite early on, also we went to, to uh, Vietnam. You were invited for an open source uh, conference. And uh, yeah, since then we have had a team in Vietnam and worked on, on uh, developing the DHIS version 2 based in, in uh, also in, in Asia. And later, many more countries uh, came on board. And uh, yeah, now, as I understand, there are 30 countries in, in Asia using the DHIS uh, 2. And, uh, Important in that regard is, of course, to work together, share experience, and also to join in the development and further expansion in the context of, of, the, of the DHIS to the uh, I call it the movement rather than the social, because there's a idea and ideology behind all this, and that is to work on uh, uh, improving equity in health services. That's kind of the core of, of, uh, of the data use uh, approach. And we can say that over all this uh, first part of the development, we have been focusing on, on the data software and developing the use of all the software. But what we want to focus on in the let's say next uh, not taken, but from now on and further that will be to improve ways of using the software, using the data, and using the data for improvement of health services and maybe in particular the ideology of equity in, in uh, the provision of health services in countries and across countries. And yes, uh, I, I was not supposed to talk more. I think uh, Saro, who is the boss of, of, of uh, this uh, show, I and mean, his data and, and uh, his hub, uh, his comments uh, as well, I think. Because uh, we have organized uh, at his hub, uh, and the boss of his hub, uh, come here. Thank you, and uh, so I'm not in my name. Uh, so first of all, thank you everyone for uh, being to this conference, the first ever DHS to Asia Pacific conference. Uh, it's a very new experience for the DHS to Asia hub that has been really set up to conduct this conference. So thank you everyone, and thank you to the hosts in Vietnam for giving this hospitality for the video. And we hope the conference is uh, useful and good for you, and we look forward to the discussions. Uh, 
and how best you can support the country itself. Thank you so much for that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right, so I just want to start off with some introductions to the participants. So we'll learn about all the history groups that are here um, a little later on. So um, rather than have you all introduce yourselves, we're going to get a chance to speak to each other during the breaks, during the various sessions. I'm just going to call you guys up. You can just stand so we can see um, where you're from, just so we can all get to learn um, about each other. So if I can please ask my colleagues to allow just to stand up. Big welcome to allow. Thank you so much. My colleagues from Cambodia. Vietnam. From Pakistan. Vietnam. From Jordan. Here is said. Jake said. Cass said. Nepal. We have our partners from UNMPA and Terraform, please. Nice to see you all. Oh, Bangladesh as well. It's a yes, though, right? <laughs> Okay, so also to our virtual participants, um, thank you for joining. Um, we have 315 virtual participants that have registered from 70 different countries. They'll be joining at different times. Some will be joining us together during the after sessions. Some will be doing the recording. Some will be doing the YouTube. Um, so a big welcome to all of our virtual participants. Thank you. All right, so just so we can get to know you a little bit better, um, we're just going to do a quick exercise here, just to give us a brief introduction to all of you. So if you can just join via your mobile phone or via your computer, um, this Mentimeter link, you go to menti.com and just use this code up at the top of the screen here. It's called right here, 7695 And I'll just give everyone a second. Please, for those of you online, you can join us. Okay, so let's get started, and, and hopefully, you know, you can all introduce yourself as well during the breaks, and we can have discussions as well, and we'll learn a lot about each other. So, we just talked about where we're all from, but which countries are you working in? So, I think you have more than one option here. And this is both for all of our histories as well as our staff and partners.
see we have quite a mix of spectrum study. A lot of different experiences I think we can share with each other. So I hope you all get to share your experiences a bit during the week, and you'll see this type of wide range of individuals joining. And we have a number of colleagues, even from our African and our Latin American students, come to study. Move on to the next question. What is your job title? So we can bring a little bit more about it. I think you'll see we also have quite a mix of, of individuals with different backgrounds. Very sorry. It's very good. We have a mix of uh, technical individuals, some individuals with databases, those with the most recent offices, as well as our, our staff who are kind of more on, on the plus side of these data. Good mix of individuals as well, both online and compared to other things. What are your responses? You can see it's quite an even spread, right? You don't have uh, too many people. <coughs> what type of organization are you trying to? Good mix again. How many years have you been using the HS? <coughs> Looks like we have quite a few experienced implementations. Yeah, lots to learn from each other. Those of you who are new here will be really glad to hear about your experiences. So. Good mix. Describe your main role within your DHS team implementation. What are you kind of working on?
And for those of you who are working on the test implementation, just get a quick description of the various use cases that you're working on or how I'm using the HSC um, in these settings. I think a lot of sessions will be relevant for a lot of you. We'll be discussing many different topics. We have, a, we have a very good mix of uh, session material that you work with. And I think many of the sessions will be very shortly. Many of the sessions will be relevant to a lot of you. Or what you're doing. And we're really happy to be on the here for you to share that. What are your expectations for this conference?
Very good. So I think between the various use cases you're working on, the experiences, the skill sets you guys have, as well as um, the topics you're mentioning here, we're going to have a very fruitful discussion. You'll get to talk about the other ones. I think this is the last question I have for you all. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take these results. I'm going to share them with you so you can have a closer look at all of them. But please um, feel free to um, you know, bring up anything else you would like with any of us. And I hope that you can all interact with each other to introduce yourselves a little bit more um, and discuss amongst yourselves as well as you're working on, all the things that you're doing. I think that would be very interesting to see to you in the breaks as well as your many of the sessions as well. Thank you very much for engaging with us here. here. Um, and yeah, I'm sure these yourselves will follow me. Um, so uh, earlier today, I sent out a link for a Google Drive folder. I'm just going to put all of our presentations and all of the material for the conference in that folder. So um, if you have any issues accessing that, um, please reach out to me or um, any of your colleagues, your facilitators, and the happy to make sure you can access those materials. And for those of you online as well, um, if there are any issues accessing that material, um, please just uh, send a message on, on Zoom or you can reply to me in the email. Sorry. What I'd like to do now is just go over the agenda a little bit, just so we're you know aware of all the different sessions over the next couple days. I think that we're going to be able to meet many of your expectations. And you know, for those of you where you see something that's not in um, we will be around and we're happy to talk to you about those specific topics as well. Okay, so we're just going through all the introduction and everything from nine to ten. Um, and uh, I'll just ask Tom to come up in a minute and explain all the logistics and everything. Um, shortly after I've got the agenda for you. Um, after we finish all of the introduction, I'm going to ask my colleagues, Abula and Sora, to come up and just give a little bit of background on, on what this is and you know, um, you know, how we're providing support to various countries, both globally and in the region. Uh, and then we're going to get a bit of an introduction to all of our HIST team members that are here. Many of you will know them already from supporting your implementations, but you'll see there's a bigger team that are working together on supporting the Asia Pacific region um, in various implementations. And they'll just give a bit of, a bit of background on their work there from um, the who they're supporting and the various mechanisms we can utilize to kind of continue that cooperation. After lunch, we'll start getting into our domain specific discussions. So we'll start today with a discussion on HIV from 1, 1.30 to 3 p.m. And um, all of the sessions are structured very similarly. So we'll have an introduction to kind of our global product, our global toolkit for supporting HIV in the field, our DHI toolkit. And then we'll hear from a number of countries on their HIV implementations. So you get to hear from your colleagues who will come to present. And for this session, we have Cambodia, Indonesia, Bangladesh, and Nepal who will all give a presentation um, on what they're doing in their countries so you can learn from, from their experiences. And after the break in the afternoon, um, we'll discuss immunization and I'll have my colleague Pam open that session. And similarly to our other sessions, we will discuss the toolkit, the uh, global toolkit. DHS toolkit for immunization, and then we'll hear from the colleagues of Bangladesh uh, and Bangladesh on um, their own implementations and how they're supporting immunization in their own countries. At the end of the day, there will be an optional session. 
So as I go through the agenda, maybe if you see something uh, that is missing, or sorry, you notice something that is missing, or you have additional questions, maybe more technical questions or other questions about your own implementation, um, we will be around to help you and support you. Um, and any of those questions we're curious about, it's completely optional, but it's just if you notice uh, some version of questions that you have. And we have a lot of experts here um, today that I think can support you with that. Um, and optionally as well, we have a number of posters around the room. So if you want to learn a little bit more about any other posters, we'll, we'll put them up in the future as well that um, so you can have a closer look. And if you want to learn any more information about anything on those posters as well, um, you can have a discussion with your colleagues on that information. On that 7 p.m. today, we'll also have a group photo and dinner and we'll follow up on the from all of us. Mark. <clears throat> Uh, then tomorrow morning we'll have a very interesting session by our, by our colleague Lars, and he'll give us a review of all the new features in DHIS2. And I saw that was a request in our feedback that a lot of you were wondering what are the new features. So um, we'll make sure to address that as best we can, and you get a good overview to Lars is very good. It's giving an exciting overview of all the new features that are in DHIS2. And tomorrow we're going to also focus a bit on just country implementations without a specific use case. Um, so we'll hear from uh, Vietnam, Laos, Yemen, and Pakistan. Um, Yemen, they're not here physically, but they will provide us uh, with some support virtually. Um, and we'll just learn kind of what they're doing a little bit more broadly in their entire health, uh, uh, health system um, and, and just kind of share their experience with us. Starting tomorrow, we will also have some parallel sessions. So you'll be able to choose um, in which uh, session you'd like to attend. Um, so we will uh, tomorrow after lunch break out into two groups and we'll have one session on TV and one session on the following and you are free to choose whichever session you would like to attend. Um, from TV we will have a similar structure for our sessions, learning about the global toolkit and then hearing from um, a number of countries. We will also hear about a very interesting collaboration in the Econ region um, from Norm and John as well. Um, but working on kind of cross-border collaboration of uh, TVs. In the data quality session, we will also learn about some of the data quality features and hear from a couple of countries, uh, uh, sorry, Sri Lanka and Indonesia, on their experience implementing data quality and data use uh, features in their own settings and some of the kind of uh, constraints and challenges to them. And then tomorrow, after our tea break in the afternoon, um, we'll also have two parallel sessions. One will be on systems evaluations. So we saw a number of countries that were just starting out. We saw some countries that were quite experienced. So we have different frameworks for evaluating your system based on you know, where you are in your implementation. We also have some other assessments and tools that you can use to assess capacity, for example, and other measures to your system. So we will just be sharing all that information during that session. And then the parallel session is custom app development. So we had a couple of technical individuals who identified themselves. Um, so you know that is kind of your main goal and what you're interested in. Um, that might be very interesting for you to see a number of custom apps that we need, you know, how they can support various operations within the system. Similarly, tomorrow we will continue our expert round session and our poster session. So once again. As I go through the agenda, if you see topics that you know you are missing or we don't address any of your needs, then we're happy to talk to you then. Uh, I know it's a long day and you need tired, but we're so happy to help you out um, if you have any questions. On, our, on day three, we're going to, to discuss a little bit on interoperability and integration, and our, my colleague Warren will lead that session. Um, there's a lot to talk about, I think, and you have a, a little bit topics um, over there and we'll discuss that all together. Continuing with some additional country presentations um, from 11 to 12 30 on the on day three. Um, we'll hear from Benny Watson, um, Paul more broadly on their system as well as the Indonesia on the broader system as well. After lunch then we'll talk about disease surveillance. I also saw that as a topic and didn't feed that so I think this will be very interesting for many of you. Um, once again, we'll start with the global toolkit, and then we'll hear from Lao, Afghanistan, Lebanon, and Pakistan on their global surveillance systems. And to close our sessions, um, 
we'll just, just discuss a little bit of implementation guidance and get some feedback from you. So we have uh, an agenda filled with a number of different topics, and I saw a number of those topics in the feedback as well. So hopefully we're able to address some of your concerns. But as I mentioned, Um, as I mentioned, on each day we have these text technologies. So, if there are any questions that we haven't addressed during the actual sessions, um, there will be a large group of experts. So, hear from them shortly. We'll be introducing themselves, and they can also help me on um, you know, whether it be a technical question, a question on your implementation, project management, or just any other question that we've not been able to address. So, try to start with you. I'll be well out with whatever that means. I'm going to just hand it over to Tom. We will just go over the just. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, our friends and new friends. After so many communication over the email, finally we met each other. So I'm very happy. Welcome to Vietnam and to our beautiful islands. Uh, I will go very fast over the logistic uh, thing because we go behind the schedule. Um, so as you know that during three day conference, we will have a lunch. Uh, provided uh, in the conference, and the lunch will be organized in the way, uh, so you all can have a choice for your special needs of food. And the lunch will be served at the hotel building uh, for you who don't live here. So the hotel building is in the main wine boat building there, and the lunch will be on the ground floor, main coral room. And uh, Today, we also have a gala dinner on the beach, also outside of that um, uh, restaurant. I think that would be the place we would have a group photo when the sunset go down very beautifully. Because this time of the year uh, is the time that the sunset is the most beautiful, and we are very happy to enjoy that during this time. So, lunch uh, and dinner uh, will be over there in the ground floor on the main building and in, in the buffet side. We also uh, many of you approached me to ask for the gray in room. Uh, in this building, in conference building, we have so many small rooms. So if you want to have a gray in room, uh, that uh, 10 five minutes before you want to pray, you will ask me and I will leave you to the room for you to pray. So I think that's the main thing. Uh, also, many of you uh, asked me for the payment. Uh, we are here for three days, and the first day is quite happy for me. So during this three days, uh, you can always meet me at the table there, uh, at the back, uh, during the big breaks. We have a good big breaks today, so we can do the payment. Uh, so, uh, I know that you run um, behind the schedule. I know that you have uh, so many questions to ask about practical issue when you are living, uh, when you are staying here in Fuku. So I always around uh, here for you to ask the questions. And uh, also, John uh, recognized that we have a, a pen that I provide the, in the uh, gift. And he wants me to explain, explain it or you want to that. So it's a five in one pen. They have a five functions that have um, light, uh, touch, and uh, one very important function is that to recognize the fake money because when you are here, uh, you go to the street, you uh, always get uh, change from the people in five hundred thousand dollars or something like that. You can use this pen to recognize whether it is fake or not. Because five hundred thousand dollars is really is the biggest note we have 
and uh, it's very easy to fetch. But I just kidding, it's not the way to case. And it also has a USB inside the pen that is 16 GB. So if you want to um, copy the conference material or add your friend for some material, you can always use it USB. So I think, uh, I hope that this one is useful for you. And we also have a small gift from six uh, HISP um, team in uh, HISP as a hub, that is a curling uh, uh, of 2023. And uh, the back, uh, in the back you can see that is a beautiful picture of both the lady. Uh, this picture already in this year won the best prize for photography of Vietnam in the world. So once again, welcome to Vietnam, and I do hope that you will have a three day uh, in school and can learn from each other and uh, what can you do again for coming. All right, so I'm just going to ask my uh, colleagues, uh, Ula and Sora, if they can come up and we'll get started with our discussion. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Both here and online, welcome to the book walk and the conference. My name is Olga Pintresa. I'm uh, from University of Oslo, the Thesis Center. I'm the deputy director there and also leading the implementation group. We'll give you a quick uh, background on the overall Thesis Network and the work at the University of Oslo. And then my colleague Soda will explain more about the regional collaboration in the Thesis Hub. So as um, my colleague John Rowe explained, we started uh, this, this journey about 30 years ago. Jörn started it in uh, South Africa back in 94. And it's been an um, action research network um, and research project from the University of Oslo that has grown into a big global network of VHIS uh, development and implementation system. So there's been a big focus on capacity building and innovation uh, with PhD programs, master's programs, and a lot of in service training, so this kind of VHIS conferences, academies, uh, focusing on building capacity and information systems. Uh, and of course, in the HIST network, and at the University of Oslo, we also developed the VHIS to open source platform. Uh, which you all know. Um, with the core use case, they support it on the shared and integrated data repositories for uh, health information system across all programs, uh, supporting information for action. Um, and as I will explain tomorrow, the data supports aggregate data, data, and patient data in, in a range of ways. And it's a very generic platform supporting a range of use cases within the health sector. And also beyond the health sector. Uh, and we learn a lot about these use cases uh, these three days. So we got the call on your laptop. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Universal Oslo Health Center is also a WHO collaborative center. So we work very closely with the WHO on developing uh, toolkits, content for the DJS platform. And I think uh, should I did mention this uh, when you went through that agenda, when we go to 
topics like HIV, TB, immunization. We will learn about these two kits uh, that are based on normative guidance from the workshop, uh, but will be just specific implementation guidance on the metadata. Uh, and we work together with almost all global uh, health partners. We have a lot of investments in, in the BHS platform. Now we work across uh, global partners like NORA, the Norwegian Agency for Development, that supported us from the beginning. And then also Global Fund, Petra, Gavi, CDC, UNICEF, Gates, USAID, and WHO, and, and many more. And uh, as we'll see in the map of the next slide, BHS is now used by ministries of health in 75 countries and it's uh, still growing. And we reached 32 countries in Asia. And um, as you said, India, the first implementation of BHS in India was around 2000 2001. And India was also the, the complete pilot, the first country to pilot BHS to the, the web based versus that we started developing in 2000. Uh, five and in Canada they started in 2006. Um, it's a long history for the HIS in the Asia region as well. Yeah, so this is the map you can see the HIS is now used in Latin America, almost all over Africa, and in many, many countries in Asia and the Pacific. And as you can see in the chart here, there's been a big growth since we started in 2006 up to today. And during the recent pandemic, or the current pandemic, um, many, many countries adopted the HS2 for both for the sea surveillance, uh, contact tracing, and later the vaccination programs. Uh, 47 countries for surveillance and 42 countries for vaccine uh, registries and management. And we can see also a lot of countries in Asia Pacific. Uh, and there were a lot of innovations here in Asia that was shared uh, with uh, other countries across the world. Um, Sri Lanka, in fact, started already in January 2020, developing the first implementations for COVID support. I'll talk a little bit about the broader East network and some of the activities, and then so I'll talk more about the Asia specific. Um, so in, in supporting all these 70 plus countries, um, capacity building is really the, the core activity. Um, we quickly found out that it's important to have uh, HS expertise in the countries, in the region, available to provide long-term support in order to work with the, the governments to build sustainable systems. And these groups are really lifelong partners uh, working side by side with the government in improving the HS2 in the countries. Uh, it's not really a project that ends up with three or five years. They are meant to stay. Uh, and we have seen that, including in Vietnam, where the first is team was well established around 2006, and they're still around, and in India from 2001. What we also see is that uh, with a very generic HS platform, it's important to have experts working in country. Uh, working with the users to design solutions that work in the local context. Um, and it's also important for us to learn from innovations in countries, the collaboration between the, the technical experts and the users to design new innovations, new solutions that we can bring into the software team and uh, led by us. Uh, that we'll talk much more about the features tomorrow. But all of this is coming from these local collaborations in countries with the his groups working together with the governments. So this network of his groups, and you can see all the seven P groups listed on the right there, is endorsed and funded by, by global partners like uh, Global Fund, Gavi, UNICEF, Norad, and CDC. Uh, and by working across all these partners, the his can offer a very coordinated support to, to countries with less fragmentation across the partners. All the HIST groups uh, in the network share uh, a set of core values uh, and sign MOUs um, where they agree to, to follow these principles that are related to supporting open source software, promoting local ownership, promoting sustainable systems, integrated systems, and the information fraction and data use. Um, and when you get the slides, you should also click and look at the full set of 
for various separate um, forming the HIST network. So, as I mentioned, there are 70 groups in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. Um, of course, at the University of Oslo, and many of these groups are led by uh, former PhD students from our research program, uh, including uh, John Lewis, that's leading the, the HIST Vietnam uh, group that's based here. And we still have a lot of new teachers in local universities uh, collaborating on research, on uh, master's programs, and in service centers. So, uh, I'll just go over some of the key is group activities. Of course, the most important is the country support, uh, working together with governments in uh, building capacity, building in government capacity on, on the HSP, all aspects of that. Um, and also to provide expert level support on the configuration and the maintenance of the systems. Um, and as we know, there are many other systems in, in the new space, in the bigger ecosystem of information systems. So these groups are also important in supporting uh, guidance on the broader architecture and how the HSP can interact with all the sort of systems. And um, as we saw in the platform, Lead the session on integration and interoperability tomorrow. So, these groups also work very closely with our research uh, group from the University of Oslo. Uh, and it's important for us to, to get involved in the field, to work uh, together with users, solving problems together, and finding out what really works in the local context. And then feed that back to uh, the software team and the implementation team uh, that are developing the global products will also share these sessions and research findings across the uh, conflicts and these groups in the network. So these groups also work uh, very closely with uh, regional partners like regional knowledge offices and in Asia, the ADM network uh, in uh, supporting capacity building and, and uh, support of implementations. And they also organize, as you see here in Asia, uh, academies, teachers training programs, and conferences like this one. These groups are also an important uh, part of our software development. Of course, the, there's a big software development team uh, at the University of Oslo with around 50 developers. But there's also a lot of local uh, software development and participation in the software development process happening in conference in these groups. So first of all, his groups are an important source for requirements. So they are providing requirements to our global team uh, on behalf of Ministries of Health that will guide our future roadmap and new features in the new HSP platform. And when we release new features, these groups are also important in facilitating uh, testing and feedback back to the software development team. Uh, and as we saw during COVID and, and in many other uh, use cases, a uh, lot of these groups, a lot of local app development, integration work, the way solve local problems that are not easily solved by the generic features, but can uh, extend the VHS platform uh, to better tailor VHS to the local context and the local challenges. And these innovations are then shared with all these groups and all the companies that can benefit from this. During COVID, a good example here was the uh, COVID certificate uh, applications that were developed, uh, especially here in Vietnam, that were then shared with many other countries uh, and also to other continents. So, um, as we kind of laid out a little bit of the his help uh, approach that Sola will talk more about. Um, you saw that there are 70 countries, no, 70 countries and 70 groups, so many countries to, to support and work to coordinate. Uh, global fund that we have worked together over many, many years on DHS country support, and of course they invest a lot in the, in the country implementations to their grants. Um, approached us uh, three years ago to start a discussion on how that, um, the technical assistance work and the uh, to support the VHS to, to be decentralized down to the regional level. And that started the uh, shaping of the regional fiscal hub. So you can see in the diagram now that the 70 districts are organized in three regional hubs, as we call them. And the Asia hub has uh, six districts, uh, four from the initial base to India, 
uh, promoting coordination and cooperation in the activities that we do for information systems elements in different countries that we work with at the country level and at the region level of us. Um, we have many uh, funding partners working in different countries for different programs. So the idea was to get better collaboration between the partners in the region uh, and build more cohesive DHS implementations and support plans in the countries that high schools are involved in. Uh, since we all of us work in different geographies, we have different use cases to work with. We are learning a lot of new things from the current implementations. So it was important to bring us together on a platform where we could learn and share the expertise on the HS implementations. And not only the technical support areas, but also looking at the assessment, the country optimized work planning, budgeting, the technical systems, and ultimately the implementation support for the countries. A lot of the focus of uh, setting up this hub was to focus on the uh, delivery, the quality of the delivery of the HS2. Hence, there are mechanisms which I think later have been set up in place to take more active feedback from the countries, the ministries, and the funding partners that we're working with so that there's good feedback happening, which can be put into the next cycle and what improvements can be brought into the world as we can And as for us, it's good to collaborate and share best practices and ensure that we have proper skill transfers in place so that we could have improved technical, administrative, and organization development for the members of the club. Just to give a quick update on uh, our first annual meetup that we had in the earlier two days in the week, so December 5th and 6th. So all of these groups were assembled for the first time uh, in that one place and in person discussed the work that have done in the last few years and the country support that have been, they have been providing to the different uh, countries for HMIS and national programs implementations. Uh, this group shared a lot of the local innovations which were done during the pandemic and we also discussed how these innovations can be taken to other countries by doing minimal modifications to meet the country context. We also had discussions on identifying common priorities across the countries and the challenges that the countries face in respect of implementation and how these groups can work together to mitigate those challenges and make give better services to the countries. And we also identified some future planning where we identified areas where we could join to collaborate and support to benefit the implementation that we can in the countries. So, um, so this idea, the potential data support planning and implementation process has been discussed with a lot of funding partners, a global fund government has a lot of thought behind doing the need-based DHIS to PA uh, as much as possible and side by side also handling the priority technical assistance areas also. So during the course of the global fund contract and the work that has been the Austro team and the folks have been doing uh, with the funding partners. We have developed some majority assessment toolkits where we conduct these assessments in countries. So, to begin with, few countries already uh, piloted the assessment and we are taking that forward. So, Myanmar, Afghanistan, Pakistan, the big examples where assessments have been carried out to understand the situation of the existing health information system. And we're working on those assessments together. So I think it's group who is working with the national HMIS and the different programs in the country. While UIO is also playing a supporting role. So we have a team from UIO visiting Nepal next week for doing the similar assessment for identify the existing state of the HMIS and the national programs implementation. And what are the immediate priorities that are coming out of that assessment? So once we identify the priority and needs. We're discussing with the HMIS and the national core companies. We try to prioritize that with the uh, priority, the budget is available, and the needs of the country, how we can make a country work plan with the budgets associated, and also try to closely time that work plan with the funding partners in the region. So we have global fund Gavi, we have MFK. So if you want to do different sets of activities, then which partner can contribute to which activity? So that we have more cohesive and more aligned way of working in the country rather than working separately in silos with different partners. Because we have seen that there are many partners who are funding the same country, but they are often found to working in silos. So we're trying to build a more cohesive way of working where we can bring all the partners and these groups and the ministry on board. And we have a joint work plan which could be then implemented to strengthen the HS to activities in country. 
So once we have this approvals of the priorities in the SSC budgets and whatever is needed from the, the country plans, the global fund, and the other funding partners who can uh, give funds to the country directly, then we move to the DKI implementation phase where we take short term technical assistance uh, packages where we can implement different things. So, what we have under the open contract that I covered in the next slide. So, we have defined some potential short term DAs with defined scope of works and investment. So, we have a look at that. And stage four has been in the introduced that. In our, uh, you've seen that we've done a lot of PA in different countries, but often the quality assurance piece is uh, not given much emphasis. So we have introduced that the, whatever PA of this group has in the country, it is essential that it gets quality assurance from internally within the his group, but also we take the feedback from the funding partners and the ministries to, to a client satisfaction survey that has been designed. So you will see a lot more uh, country support and technical assistance will start following the same procedure moving forward. So you will get to know when these assessments happen in your country and this is the same process starts in So these are some standard scope of us uh, on the range of the global fund supported PA in countries. So many of the countries present here are global fund eligible countries for the international programs. So, Global Fund has worked with the University of Costco and the his groups to define the standardized scope of works for DHS country support. Uh, so, based on past experience of working with DHS2 uh, in different countries for different uh, HMIs and national programs, we have documented that what, yeah, what are the expected results out of these listed key items, what should be the approach that should be taken. What kind of effort will it take from this group and what would be needed from the country for making that PA implementation um, uh, happen in that specific country? And what are the prerequisites and considerations that we need to take into account to ensure that whatever work we're doing is uh, scalable and can provide long term support for the country that we work? So these are some of the items where we have uh, bits and pieces of everything. So we have assessments and helping the country with work plans and budgets. Uh, system and server applications, we know uh, it, it's a very crucial component when it comes to big judge implementations. Interoperability, we have uh, for both HMIs and LMIs and other HMIs and interoperability. We have PI items associated to improving the timeliness and completeness of um, data, um, uh, especially with a specific focus on HIV and malaria. We have components for tracking systems for the three key national programs. Uh, and working towards a more integrated HMIs where even if you have uh, implemented individual trackers, but then the data should feed into the national HMIs to have the HMIs as an integrated entity. WHO dashboards have been, uh, been developed uh, since long for uh, e disease programs, so HIV, malaria, and many more. So, implementing those packages uh, in countries and making their implementations more aligned to the standards. What which WHO has recommended, so that's also part of it. A uh, community health information system, the countries were implementing it or they have implemented it and are seeking improvements, then they could also be covered under the state systems. Uh, there's a specific package for global fund direct reporting, so that's uh, yet to be implemented in the Asian countries. Uh, then, of course, the routine maintenance and metadata cleanup that may be needed. It's of course due when the implementation is not for a longer duration. So these are some uh, areas which Global Fund is trying to support in countries through the, his uh, hub and the his group mechanics. So uh, since we recently started last year working as a hub, so we were able to secure one of a similar project that we wanted to work together as a, a big entity. So we engaged with UNFPA in carrying out a RMNCH HMI assessment in uh, seven countries through the HISP Asia Hub. So, right now, these are five HISP groups so working in these countries in carrying out these assessments. So, we have LAO, PNG, Bangladesh, Indonesia, East Timor, Maldives, and Nepal, where we have UNFP colleagues working in collaborating, working with the HISP groups, where the HISP Hub has developed an assessment questionnaire for that focused on RMNCH component. And we have developed that questionnaire. The UNFP colleagues in country have helped us in getting that information from the HMIS uh, teams. 
And now as the next step is working towards um, drafting these situation assessment reports. And in year two of the project, we will be further discussing what country specific interventions we could do, which UNFPA can find and support. And his groups can do the technical implications for strengthening the uh, LMCHS match assessments. So these are some examples where the Asia group is working as a collective and are working together to uh, do some assessments and do just looking at the activities. So in that, in that side, yeah. So if there are any questions on how we how can we support the countries who are present here, then of course we'll be around. So we can link you up with uh, his groups for working in those specific and the countries, and you can see how best we can support people um, once we uh, are back at the workplaces and we can continue the discussions that we need to share. Thank you so much. All right, everyone, it's actually just uh, our first break right now. Um, so please uh, join us outside and uh, get to know each other a little bit better. Try and fix the microphone, I apologize about that. <laughs>